Okay, I'm going to start my chicken parm, uh, trying it today on the Blackstone. One thing I just wanted to do a quick little demonstration of is on cutting peppers. Some of my friends don't even know how to cut peppers, so let's just go. What I do is I cut the cap off completely. That can just get chopped up right away. Now we're just going to be grilling some onions and peppers, uh, red and green peppers to put with <clears throat> the chicken parm. Probably not making anything else with it. No noodles or whatever. We're trying to help a couple people out cutting a little bit differently or cooking a little bit differently. So now you have the pepper like this. So you have the whole center core. That's the big mess of getting uh, that out is the problem for a lot of people. What I do is I just take a little bit of the knife. You can even take it and mark your thumb with it. Run it around so you're not cutting into that part. And then just separate it comes right apart. Take your knife, cut down into the bottom a little bit here, and just scoop this white stuff out. No nutritional or visual value to it at all. All cleaned out. Take this one, just break this out with your hand. You try to capture as many seeds as you can to toss. Same thing. Take your knife, run it around, nice and quick, side to side. That's it. All right, let's start the chicken. We want to butterfly this, so it's just a pretty simple cut. right down through the middle. Not all the way through though. You want to leave a little bit of a, a space for that cut of chicken to hinge on to open that right up. So it's opened up nice and wide. I'm going to grab a piece of Saran wrap, which we all know sticks to itself better than anything. This is actually uh, the only stuff I use is uh, from Sam's Club, and it's the best stuff around. So what this does is it prevents, I'm going to hammer this out with this meat hammer to spread it out, make it as wide and as uniformly thick as I can. What the cellophane does is keep stuff from splashing around. Just work your way around. Don't have to go crazy. That's a pretty good thickness. And we'll take this off, throw that right on a plate, and do the other four. Okay, we're going to start breading the chicken. Uh, make sure, every time when you're cooking any of this kind of stuff, make sure you wash your hands in between the takes. Uh, what I did between the two videos, I took my homemade tomato sauce. We mixed this up with a little bit of tomato paste to thicken it up because we're not doing any noodles or anything. Some chopped garlic some Italian seasonings, a little bit of sugar. It already had a lot of garlic and uh, basil in it when I, when I cooked it last year and made it from the garden. So this is kind of a little bit thick pasty. Just gonna drizzle that over the chicken when it's done and put the cheese on top. So we'll get that out of the way. You got the breadcrumbs, you got uh, beaten eggs, I put a little bit of milk in it to stretch it out just a little bit. You got the sheets of chicken. Dip them in. Hold it up. Yep, you're supposed to hold it up. Chicken slippery. About as slippery as the politicians on TV right now. Let it drain off a little bit. Put into the breadcrumbs. You toss the breadcrumbs up and over, get it coated good.
Get them right in there good. Now it's up to you whether you want to double dip these. Some people do. Get an extra crunchy coating on it. We'll see how this goes and I'll decide after. <laughs> Let it drain off. Coat it. You can do a lot with the breadcrumbs. You know, you get the Italian style breadcrumbs at the grocery store. You can spice them up. Sometimes I put Hungarian hot paprika uh, sparingly because it really is hot, but it has a nice taste to it. And the flavor uh, really enhances a lot of dishes. And the thing that I like about it, because I'm not a big hot spicy person, not crazy anyways, like some of my friends, uh, the burn goes away quick. It just gives you a little bite, tells you it's there, and then it goes away. Same thing, repeat it over and over again. Dip it in the egg batter, wash. Get that pressed on there good. Got a nice thick coat on it. I'm just going to do a single coat. I really, I don't need the extra. I don't need the extra calories. Last one, same thing. Egg wash. What the egg wash does is it helps bind the breadcrumbs to the chicken or whatever you're breading. Basically the same theory for a lot of breading, fish, anything like that. There you go. Okay, we're gonna get going, putting these uh, chicken palms going on the grill. The grill's all heated up. These things look fantastic. Alright, give them about probably four minutes on each side, I would think. So I moved these off to the side. They're done now, but I have to get a little bit more oil down in the center. So we're going to be cooking these again, flipping them. One uncooperative one, as usual. Man, does that smell good. And there you go. I'm going to use a little bit of sea salt. A little bit of black pepper. Turn that down a little bit too. We're going good. Good. I'm such an amateur. There you go. There's a good view of them. I'm gonna use this rack. It has the little standoffs on the bottom. Put that up on the side there. Get 
it right to the edge. This is why you firm it up, because you really don't want it running over onto the griddle. That would make probably a pretty bad mess. There we go. We'll see. We can definitely finish off the uh, tomato sauce after after we get this done and put a little bit of uh, cheese on top. You can dress the edges if you need to. I'm going to leave a little bit just for that purpose. But it's staying on top pretty good. No matter what you do, you got to clean, so just deal with it. One thing you can't tell on these videos is the smell. So we're still burning firewood up here. Stay warm. It's mid-March. We're still burning our wood stoves are going, so that's drifting across and combining with the smell of the food. And I don't really know where else I'd want to be right now. Dress them up nice with the mozzarella. Nice fresh stuff. Let them sit a couple minutes, and then we're going to cover them to melt the cheese. Okay, let's cover a couple of these up at a time. These dome-shaped covers just drop right in over. You'll see how quick the cheese melts at that point. Retains the heat, retains a little bit of the moisture. These shouldn't have dried out between the sauce and cooking fairly quickly. What we'll do is, when these two are done, I'll take the covers, put them on these two, put these two up on the warming trays, and that way it'll stay stay warm until you serve it. All right, let's get these transferred. These are all melted down nice. Look at that. Woo! Feed the dogs. Okay, we got all four of these done. They've been covered, the cheese is melted, cleared everything out. They're still up on the warming rack, so they're staying warm. Got the middle of the grill cleaned again, scraped off, a little bit of vegetable oil. Here we go. Everybody teasing me about my green trick or treat bowl. These things are indestructible. And it was a dollar. Here comes the smell of the county fair right there.
That's a whole lot of smell. Then, like I said, we're in New Hampshire. So the wood stoves are still going. 